Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to the Alpha for Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. As today we continue our explorations of the farthest reaches of the Furabundus system, we have yet to reveal our roots from Latotian's Passage, but it does look like we're headed back into Valencia's territory because we've got a, a node there clearly marked as Mundus Valencius. And it looks like we're headed for Mondius. Fair enough. Hopefully we'll have a route from there to Valancius. Because otherwise we might have to circle all the way back around, which would be frustrating. A fire broke out in one of the decks during the warp voyage. The raging disaster consumed the entire chamber, destroying precious cargo and damaging the interior plating. No guilty parties were found. While clearing out the rubble, a few people claimed the soot on the plasteel beams formed lines in a cryptic alien language not known to humans. The delirious workers were executed and their bodies disposed of in the proper manner. Now, see, I feel like that might have been a slight overreaction, but then again, given uh, how awful things are in the warp, I guess better safe than sorry. Ooh, space wreckage. Let's check that out. And scrap. Well, at least that pays for our hull damage. Oh, this is interesting. So, three different stats, each with a character assigned to it. Presumably the character with the highest score? Or is that maybe the difficulty rating? I wonder if the uh, exact character you select determines what kind of loot you get. We'll start with intelligence, but we'll try something different next time this pops up. Okay, okay. That does appear to be intelligence-based goods. An assortment of med kits and various other chemical... consumables. Though it also says we failed the check, so in theory... In theory, we could have gotten more. I will say, though, that it's a little irritating that was a straight intelligence check when clearly it should have been a Medicaid check. Those were all medical goods. Going with intelligence meant that we only had a base 45% plus modifier, whereas Medicaid would have been like 70, 75 plus modifier. Continental World, well known for its breakfasts. The crew has discovered a hidden valley littered with thousands of animal skeletons. Augur data suggests that some kind of sleeping gas vents here. It's likely the animals either didn't realize that they're headed for a deadly trap, or even come here to die on purpose. Grim, but yeah, I guess that makes sense. Let us investigate further. After a series of experiments, the ship's weaponsmiths managed to perfect a few different types of ammunition. Gas cloud grenades, that's fun. And also hazardous to our own party, so I don't know if we'll actually use them. And gas planet. Nothing. But it was uh, it was still an interesting sector. We got our first variable skill check. And the uh, gas grenade event. Let's see if we can head for Mundius Valancius now. We can. Fantastic.
We've also got access to Narmer 4. But based on the name, I'm guessing Mundus Valantius must be where Dargonus is. We have been wandering pretty aimlessly lately, so we might be about due for a story location. Ah, Xeno ships with energy sails. And still no real clues as to who that might be. I mean, I previously speculated Eldar, but as we now know, Eldar traveling through the warp is a, an exceptional rarity. Aha! Lord Captain, Master Helmsman on the line. I can report that the quest for the capital world of the Von Valancius dynasty is finally at an end. Dargonis is straight ahead. We have received countless greetings. Your subjects would like to know when their master will be arriving. Tell Dargonis the rogue traitor is coming home. It will be done, Lord Captain. Spiders in a jar. <laughs> yep, that sounds about right. So we're in for some political intrigue. No doubt capped with some gratuitous violence. Let's clear the rest of these planets before we do our homecoming. Maybe I'll run a bard someday, just so I can use gratuitous violins as an episode title. Rocky World. Adrian! Or power crystals. That's good, too. Next up, Gas Giant. Nothing. And Lava World. How did this world look before it was enveloped in this fiery shroud? Was it your ancestors, Ellen Tech, who disgorged its core in some ill-considered act? I don't know what to tell you, Yurliet. Sometimes planets are just made of lava. I assume. I am not a volcanologist. And Dargonis. I imagine we'll be front-loaded with a lot of exposition and dialogue, but... This should be interesting. Also, I think uh, Heinrichs had something he wanted to do here. That might have been our other planet, though. The uh, Forge World. Ah, oh, no landing animation this time. Oh, uh, camera, camera. There we go. Yes, yes, hello, I know, I'm fantastic. But I didn't know that you knew. It is quite gratifying to know that you're so clever and smart as to recognize my fantasticude. I won't tolerate weakness. All right, now this is getting a bit tiresome. This actually does feel like something that in the uh, final game will be animated, like a cutscene of us just walking through these crowds, rather than doing it manually like this. Clementia Wersurian. The Emperor protects. Welcome home, your lordship. A stately woman in a long, full-dress uniform makes a graceful curtsy. Her short, graying hair does not obscure her stern features. I am Clementia Wersurian, court chancellor of the Von Valancius dynasty. On behalf of all of Dargonis, please accept my deepest condolences on the untimely passing of Theodora Von Valancius. Her departure is a terrible blow to us all. But as one star expires, another always flares to life. And although still overcome with bitterness and grief, your subjects hope that you will become the Trade Dynasty's guiding light in these trying times. 
The young man quickly brings a respirator to his burnt face and bows his head courteously. His raven black hair veils his burns and skull implants, and his thin metal fingers creak quietly as he offers a welcoming gesture. Achilles Scalander, secretary at the Administratum Department. I hope your journey to Dargonis was not darkened by unwanted troubles. We had some incidents, but those are irrelevant at this particular moment. Quite right, your lordship. What happened cannot be changed, but you still have great deeds ahead of you. So let us look to the future with hope in our hearts. Does your lordship wish to survey the grounds? Or perhaps we could sate your curiosity by answering any questions you might have. Governor Urban Drivestem has been notified of your arrival on Dargonis, and will visit the palace shortly. The preparations for the official visit are well in hand, but your lordship still has plenty of time before the meeting. Hold on a moment. Clementia, right? What did you say your surname was? Clementia nods politely. You heard correctly, your lordship. I am of House Worsurian, Lord Abelard's granddaughter and direct descendant. The succession of service is an effective good. It grants new generations understanding of their function within the mechanism. Why isn't the governor here with you to greet me? Apologies, your lordship. Governor Drivestem's residence is on the other side of the world, by the administrative palace of Dargonis. We sent word as soon as you entered the system, but it takes time to travel the great distances of your domain. As well it should. A very tactful response, Clementia. Chancellor Wersurian appears unruffled, but you cannot shake the thought that the governor's lateness is a subtle political gesture designed to test the limits of what is acceptable when it comes to interacting with a new rogue trader. Yeah, yeah, it's always something. I would like to rest before the meeting. Where are my chambers? They are very close, just down the hall. That is also where the study and the audience chamber are. Achilles's face brightens with a pearly white smile, restoring some of his former good looks. Lady Theodora's study has remained locked since her last departure, but on account of your arrival, we've arranged for it to be tidied up. It is ready whenever you may need it. Very well. You are dismissed. I apologize for my bluntness, but I have a request to make. Perhaps before the meeting takes place, the illustrious Lord Captain could spare a few minutes for a conversation with me? Achilles bows his head. I am certain you will find my report on the state of affairs in the Von Valencius trade empire most useful. Interesting. I wonder what's going on there. Actually, that name does sound familiar. Scalander. I think that might be Heinrich's contact. Okay, let's walk our grounds. Oh, I see. They've uh, they've also paired our crew off and scattered them around. So it's kind of like our our ship. We'll uh, we'll chat up our crew as we explore. Hey, Jay. Such illustrious society. Such well-heeled nobles indeed. It would be worth visiting Dargonis even without getting to know you, Shireen. This world offers huge scope for doing business. Well, you have fun with that. A script in High Gothic is etched along the rim of the fountain, a prayer to the god emperor for the posterity of the Von Balancius dynasty. Neat. Glinting in the light, the coin falls into the clear water and sinks to the bottom. Sure, sure. We have messengers from Kiava Gamma. That's our forge world. 
I guess they must be standing around idle a lot these days, considering we lost contact with that planet. Future. Success is measured in blood. Yours and your enemies. Well, if that's the standard we're measuring by, then we are extremely successful. A living, fruit-bearing tree in the heart of a hive world is a fantastical sight. They probably use a lot more water to tend to this tree than the average Dargonis citizen can hope to receive in their daily rations. It is pretty. The walls of your home suffocate me, Ellen Tech. I long to leave this twisted world at the first opportunity. Duly noted and ignored. All right, I think we had Argenta over this way. And then the rest of our crew must be inside. Similar finds all over the planet. Many sages and acolytes of the arcane sciences were puzzled over this trophy brought from a forgotten world on the outskirts of the Coronis Expanse. Yeah, there's some pretty weird stuff out here. We're like... Or like two jumps from a weird crave cathedral. The plaque lists the names of each rogue trader to have led the Von Balancius dynasty, dating back to the day the capital world was founded. O oh, immortal God Emperor, be merciful to us. In the name of the Golden Throne, we live and die so that we may protect his light from the obliterating darkness. Inspire us with strength and give us the courage to overcome troubles and suffering in your name. Standing upon the altar is an ancient image of St. Macarius. Its regal frame is covered in marks. The relic was claimed in a battle on a remote and forgotten world. Oh, good. So even scattered, our crew is still making skill checks for us. That's good to know. Not that we've really found much of note thus far, but it is, uh, it is very nice scenery. Very nice atmosphere. All right, let's head inside. Welcome, your lordship. Let me inform you of the location of the chambers on your dynastic estate. Uh, very well. Please continue. If your lordship wishes to rest after your long journey, then your personal chambers are up the stairs and on the right. Yes, that's, that's right. If you need anything, whatever your soul desires, I'll be right next to your chambers, eagerly awaiting your orders. 
Okie dokie. Oh, yep, and there's the rest of our crew. Let's get a quick gander at our personal quarters. A fine painting in an expensive frame. Cool. The leather covers bear the names of the authors mostly philosophers and theologians from Dargonis. The spines of the books are trimmed with gold. The remains of a plant can be seen on the frame. Alas, the inscription is completely indistinguishable due to the patina. This antique piece of furniture is obviously well cared for but its surface is still covered with a lot of scuffs, scratches, and stains. Traces of the previous rogue traders who sat at this table. Ah, excellent. Uh, a fantastic view of the infinite black void. <laughs> that certainly settles the nerves. A sturdy safe, equipped with several bizarre mechanisms. Private bedroom. Surprisingly modest, all things considered. The bed for the head of a rogue trader dynasty is befitting the status of its owner. And that certainly looks like a secret door. I have a feeling that'll play into things at some point. There is a faint mark in the dust on the mantelpiece, which was likely left by a glass. Not really a lot of relevant info so far. I mean, some nice world building, but the secret door is the most interesting thing we've seen so far. Yeah, another, another painting in an expensive frame. All right, let's chat up our crew, and we have to track down Scalander. My compliments to your taste in art. The collection here is extensive. And most interesting. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Cassia. Yes, yes, I... I mean, all I did was inherit it, but I will gladly take credit. That looks like a podium. I'm guessing we're right off of our throne room. Oh, yep, there it is. Your Lordship, Clementia bows her head politely. For a Chancellor to a rogue trader, she is dressed rather simply. A parade doublet, polished boots, and a comfortable cloak. She bears a saber and a gilded scabbard. Whether for show or protection, one could not say. Only her ring with the Worsurian crest indicates that she is of the highest social stratum. The Governor is waiting on the periphery of the palace. Please let me know when you would like to see him. The sharp gaze, the impeccably straight back, the composure. For a moment, you feel like you're looking at a younger version of Abelard himself. Not his heir. Judging by the scars on the exposed parts of her body, Clementia saw her fair share of combat prior to assuming the position of Chancellor. Tell me, Clementia, what are your responsibilities as my Chancellor? To put it simply, I am your trade representative. Any and all decrees, deals, official communications, and meetings are first reviewed by me, and then forwarded to you, and from you, down the hierarchy. 
My purview also includes overseeing your lordship's property, the palace, the estates, the many gardens, and other domains on Dargonus that you have inherited from Lady Theodora. And whenever you are present on Dargonus, consider me your personal secretary. Duly noted. And what can you tell me about my throne world? All deals and important decisions are made here in the capital. Many years ago, an ancestor of Lady Theodora signed an agreement with the Adeptus Administratum, which allowed for efficient management of the world and the neighboring systems. In accordance with the decree, a share of the planet's population was assigned to the Administratum and converted into servitor scribes. They now toil across the entire world. Grim, but efficient. Dargonus is also the seat of several noble families who run all of the major planets in the Trade Empire. If I may express my not-so-humble opinion, they care very little about who exactly stands at the helm. Those piranhas think about their own profits just as much as they do about the prosperity of the Trade Empire itself, if not more. And lastly, Dargonus has its own fleet, a luxury unavailable to the vast majority of other worlds in your realm. In addition to battleships, the Trade Empire also employs privateer vessels, which are used to transport cargo between worlds. Does the capital stay in contact with the other worlds in my Trade Empire? Unfortunately, not at this time, Your Lordship. After the few representatives of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica on Dargonus went into a frenzy, some of the psychers were tragically pacified by the respective authorities. Since then, communication with the neighboring systems has been unreliable at best. Thanks be to the Master of Mankind that you managed to find your way to the capital. Tell me, if the noble houses are so volatile, what sense is there in keeping them? Over the many centuries, an intricate hierarchy was formed within the ruling elite of Dargonus. The great houses do more than plunder your treasury. It is replenished, to a large degree, thanks to their administrative work in their lands. Naturally, you can get rid of anyone whom you consider surplus to requirements. But right now, it could threaten the fragile stability that is currently holding the Trade Empire together. Understood. Are there any other issues I should be made aware of? Apart from the disrupted communications, Dargonus was recently raided by enemies of humanity. However, the fleet, under the command of Captain Marthius Worsurian, triumphed over the accursed Xenos. If you ask for my opinion on this matter, we have the situation completely under control. Captain Marthius Worsurian, you say? You catch her avoiding your gaze for just a moment. For the first time. It's obvious that Clementia is looking out for her house's good name. But despite the confidence in her tone, you can tell that she does not entirely believe her own words. Tell me about Governor Drivestem. Quite an interesting name on that one. Urban Drivestem is a well-respected man, and not just on Dargonus, but throughout the Trade Empire. For many centuries, his house has supported the capital's administration and the logistics between the Von Valencia systems. The Drivestem's efforts secured years of order and prosperity for Dargonus. What's more, Lady Theodora personally insisted that Lord Urban specifically be made the next governor. The way you speak of Drivestem, is that a hint of contempt or resentment I hear in your voice? No, no, I don't believe I feel either, Your Lordship. Clementia's steely eyes stare into the distance, her jaw clenching visibly. She speaks in a polite but clipped manner, clearly flustered by your insight. We have different views on how to run a world. We sometimes have discussions over the laws that are enacted. But we both work for the good of the Von Valencius Trade Empire. That much can be said without a doubt. I see. Well, thank you for your report, Chancellor. I serve the Von Valencius Empire, Your Lordship. Tell me about Achilles Scalander. 
Is he the troublesome sort? Why, not at all, your lordship. Secretary Scalander is an outstanding individual and a loyal servant of the Von Valancius dynasty. In Lady Theodora's absence, we collaborated on a number of issues related to the well-being of your domain, and he has proven himself quite capable. And I don't know why, but even the governor trembles before Achilles, which is unusual for a man of his, shall we say, standing. The last word brings a slight smile to her lips. Hmm, that is notable. So Scalander has some weight behind him, despite his lower position. The governor can wait a little longer. I have some other matters I must attend to. Certainly, your lordship. However, her thin lips twist slightly. I do not concern myself with the governor's feelings, but I must warn you. Your action or inaction may be interpreted in a certain way. I shall take my leave now. Well, I didn't exactly have a choice in the matter, so here we are. Whatever Scalander has to tell us must uh, involve Governor Drivestem. Hence why we have to talk to him first. The Von Valencius Dynasty Throne. A visible symbol of the rogue trader's power. Which now belongs to you. As well it should. While we're on Dargonis, I will check the Secretary's reports and keep an eye on the logisticians. Master Danrock does his job well, but it won't hurt to keep an eye on him. Ah, good old Dargonis. It's boring here without Lady Theodora. She loved to liven up this sleepy little place with a couple of crazy decrees and public floggings of flabbergasted nobles. Eh, not really my style. My appearance has caused a slight disturbance in the ranks of the servants of the Omnissiah assigned to the palace. Analysis of the performance of rituals and maintenance litanies has produced a satisfactory result. Oh, Pascal, you scoundrel. Always trying to make people uncomfortable. Okay, so just Heinrichs and Scholander. This should be interesting. The lack of observers on this world has led your nobles to become extremely complacent. Today alone I overheard three statements that, if so wanted, could be turned into grounds for a charge of heresy. The slender figure, clad in robes made from expensive fabric, shudders from violent coughing. Pressing a gilded respirator to his face, the man takes several deep breaths. Achilles, it's been many moons. I hope your cousin is feeling well. Achilles covers his burnt lips, trying and failing to suppress a coughing fit. She... she is in good health. She sends her regards to you, as well as her wishes for your swift return. Heinrichs frowns. For as long as the stars shine in the sky, my vigil continues. So it does. Achilles thumps himself on the chest with his augmented hand. You hear the clanging of metal against metal. Gentlemen, I am not so foolish as to fail to notice a conversation in code. Your insight deserves credit, rogue trader. Then again, I expected nothing less from Theodora von Valencius' successor. Heinrich looks at Achilles. Allow me to introduce Achilles Scalander properly. In addition to his duties as secretary of the administratum, he acts as an agent of the Golden Throne under my aegis. I'm sure you will find Achilles' service useful. 
especially when dealing with the schemes of humanity's foes within the borders of your trade empire. So he's an agent of the Inquisition. That would certainly explain why the governor is afraid of him. I figured it was either something like that, or he was secretly a high-ranking cultist. Could still be both, though. Greetings, Lord Rogue Trader Von Valencius. Allow me once again to express my deepest condolences on the loss of Lady Theodora. I will do everything I can to track down and destroy all of Conrad Voitvir's accomplices on the capital world. Yes, about that. Do you know what has become of my former Master of Whispers? Achilles nods grimly. Word of his treason reached Dargonis too late. Conrad came to the planet and left it almost immediately. Once he had sown discord in the minds of the gullible and naive. The worst of the rumors he started was that you were the one responsible for Lady Theodora's sudden demise. Of course, your loyal subjects did their best to skin alive any who showed signs of doubt. But it seems unlikely that the guards got to everyone who has allowed doubt into their heart, and now nurtures it in secret. Okie dokie. I believe you promised me a report on the current state of my trade empire. I have already forwarded all official reports to your seneschal. As for the conversation we're having right now, I wouldn't trust any paper or data slate with its contents. You see, Lady Theodora, may the Emperor have mercy on her soul, was perfectly aware of Dargonus's political environment. You, however, have only just arrived on the capital world, and I thought it would be best to bring you up to speed. Frankly, the nobles of Dargonus much like nobles on most worlds, are akin to spiders in a jar, ready to pounce on whoever is the weakest, or whomever they deem to be the weakest. The nobles of Dargonus are well-respected, rich, and powerful individuals who held Lady Theodora's favor for many years and found ways to rise above the rest by diligently serving the rogue trader. Every family pursues its own selfish interests, and each one expects that with the transition of power, they will retain and even add to their lands and wealth. The families I would recommend giving particular attention to are the Drivestems, the Gaprocks, and the Sourbacks. I should also mention the Wersurians, not a noble house per se, but a family that was part of Lady Theodora's inner circle to the Blue Blood's great displeasure. Yes, tell me about the Drive Stems. The Drive Stems are the ancient governor house of Dargonis. Predictably, the greater the wealth of the Von Valencius trade empire, the fuller their coffers grow. Their reputation is flawless except for one detail. We have evidence that urban Drive Stems rivals seem to have the misfortune of regularly falling victim to Xenos raids. I find that these attacks are always a little too advantageous for the Drive Stems. But we lack solid proof, and it might never surface. Oh, I have a feeling that it will in the very near future. Things just have a way of working out like that when I'm around. The closer an official is to a rogue trader, the braver and safer they feel. I would just like to remind everyone that rubbing shoulders with Xenos is a heresy that can be overlooked only in the case of the Von Valencius heir, not his servants. Noted. So what makes the Gabprox so special? I believe we heard them name dropped once or twice back on Janus. The Gaprax hail from a remote forge world, and among their distant relatives there are many servants of the Omnissiah, and the house itself is close to the cult of the Adeptus Mechanicus, both in spirit and in their business connections. The Gaprax oversaw the industrial shipments within your trade empire, 
until recently. Ever since the astropathic communications with Kiava Gamma was severed, they've been quite concerned about the security of the planet placed in their care. As well they probably should be. And House Sourback? Religious and hardworking, the Sourbacks own many enterprises on the world of Santiel's pride, including the distillation manufacturums that produce Prometheum. I must note that lately members of the Sourback family have been prone to overly liberal statements about the Von Valencius dynasty. They believe that Lady Theodora is a bit too keen to leave her worlds without proper oversight. Which pretty much guarantees we're going to have to go back to Santiel's Pride. Okay, so that's why it was a single lone named planet that we couldn't interact with. I imagine we will have to go back there to set them straight at some point in the future. What of the Wersurians? What can you tell me about them? The Wersurians are a line founded by Lady Theodora Seneschal, and as such are nominally considered nobility at least from the standpoint of the Imperial Navy, from which Lord Abelard hails. On Dargonis, however, their position is precarious. Firstly, they never were granted an official title, a process which has been impeded for decades by the old houses of Dargonis. And secondly, the other families do not see them as equals, but more as upstarts clinging to the rogue trader's favor. The Wersurians are responsible for the Capital World's fleet, and the majority of the cargo shipments on domestic routes. Enough about the nobles. Was there anything else you wanted to report? There was, Your Lordship. And this time it concerns the main reason for my presence on this planet. Xenos and the threat they pose both to you and to humanity as a whole. The last few months have been difficult for the people who report to me, my eyes and ears scattered throughout the Coronis Expanse. Warp disturbances, astropaths overcome with madness, ships disappearing in the Immaterium. Many of my observers and contacts have gone dark, or have been killed by some calamity or another. Still, I managed to establish communication with some key individuals who are able to warn me about incoming threats, including Xenos raids. Achilles looks you in the eye without blinking. It is within my power to supply you with intelligence on where and when the Xenos will strike next. I do not doubt that Governor Drivestem will beg you for protection against the Xenos, and in this fight, the information for my contacts will serve you well. I beseech you, rogue trader, if I ever report a threat looming over a ship or a planet, do not dismiss it. Sometimes it takes an intervention from the rogue trader and his mighty void ship to avert a disaster. Yes, I am incredible. It's good of you to recognize that. So uh, tell me, Scalander. What exactly are your responsibilities here on Dargonis? Officially, I'm a secretary at this world's administratum department. Less officially, I'm afraid I can't disclose that even to you. In short, I collect and investigate reports of heresy taking root on upstanding planets of humanity. Above all else, I am concerned about the Xenos threat that hangs over the entire Coronis Expanse, including your trade empire. Sadly, my mission was complicated by the recent warp disturbances. I am still trying to re-establish contact with many of my agents. Such as the Cult of the Final Dawn? My knowledge there is deplorably limited, Your Lordship. All my attention has been focused on tracking Xenos' activity. I'm certain that Master Von Kalox can tell you much more about those heretics than I. Very well, then tell me of these Xenos threats. The residents of the local systems are no strangers to skirmishes with enemies of humanity. 
but recently the loathsome beast seemed to have completely flown off the handle. We're receiving reports from ships that made it through the warp to Dargonis. Both they and the colonies that they departed from are being attacked. We have identified the breed of Xenos that pose this threat. The Eldari, humanity's ancient and insidious foe. Be vigilant on your travels. The Xenos will undoubtedly attack a rogue trader's ship, should they find the circumstances to be in their favor. Eldari? Really? Actually, does the Empire even differentiate between normal Eldari and Dark Eldar? Because based on the key art for the game, we know that Dark Eldar are, are tied pretty heavily into the plot. Unfortunately, in the host of humanity, there are those who are willing to grovel before our enemies in the hopes of a valuable reward. You may be interested to know that we are on the trail of such heretics. Achilles glances at a data slate. Overwhelming evidence indicates that a ruined void station in Langren's belt is being used as a base by a band of pirates who are not above dealing with Xenos. I was unable to persuade the Chancellor of the need to dispatch a ship there, but perhaps you would like to pay a courtesy call to these scoundrels yourself? Yeah, I'm one step ahead of you there, Scalander. Those guys are super dead. Now, uh, about your unofficial work. Achilles' amber eyes flash with interest. Yes. Whom do you truly serve? The rogue trader or the interrogator of the Inquisition? Achilles quickly glances at Heinrichs. And whom does the rogue trader serve? The Golden Throne? The Trade Empire? Could it be that one stems from the other? And if so, is there any sense in discussing it? Fair enough. I don't suppose you'd be willing to share a list of all your agents and the means of contacting them? I can understand your desire as a rogue trader to have everything under your control. And yet I am not at liberty to make use of classified information related to the interrogator's agents in whatever way I see fit. Achilles lowers his gaze and nods politely. Heinrichs lets out a sigh of disappointment. There's no point in trying to press my agents. None of them would ever reveal such vital information, especially not in my presence. Yeah, well, you know, I had to ask. Achilles bows and brings the respirator to his burnt lips. I sincerely hope that I can answer your other questions. Your injuries seem quite severe, Scalander. What happened? About five years ago, there was an accident. Several tanks of Prometheum exploded in the storehouse at my estate, and I was buried alive under the rubble. The Emperor preserved my soul, and the skilled physicians of Dargona saved my body, except for my lungs, with which I had to part. I presume the incident was an attempt on my life, but the identity of whoever was behind it remains a mystery. And I imagine it won't for long now that I'm here. Call it Trader's Intuition. Very well, you have sated my curiosity. I think we're done here. For now. Achilles bows. According to the message I received a few minutes ago, Governor Drivestem has arrived at court. I imagine that the Chancellor is already prepared to arrange the meeting. All that's left is to notify her that you are ready to see Urbend. How very convenient. Also, um, you know, I had a few other folks comment. Uh, back when we met Vistenza, I was trying to figure out what this weird aura around her was. And people have pointed out that it's most likely a personal force field projector, which I guess I just didn't realize existed in the setting. I mean, it was never really a staple of Necromunda. That's just the kind of lofty tech you can't get your hands on in the Underhive. But it does make sense. It's just a shame we can't get our hands on one of those. You'd think the rogue trader would have one. Or at least have access to one. 
Regardless, we are past time, so it's about time to uh, wind things down. As I suspected, this was a very talky episode. But it was also very intriguing. Um, we learned a lot about our own trade empire and about the key figures behind it. Though I am a little surprised that we didn't have custom portrait art for Clementia or Scalander. We'll see if Governor Drivestem does. I imagine he would. Vistenza did. Speaking of whom, I imagine once we go to meet him, things are going to hit the fan. Based on what Scalander was telling us, Drivestem seems to be oddly associated with Xenos attacks. So I would not be surprised if we are walking into another ambush. See you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, Dracoth, Eerie V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleib, James Tremier, Kazorm, Mark Giemza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Farum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Pietkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description.